Okay, today I've been playing with time lapse because I know that I screwed up how to get it done in the car yesterday and I figured out that I have to have a mount that's going to be able to mount to the car so that it's ready to be done. Thank you for the recommendations. I really appreciate that because I need all the help that I can get when it comes to video. But what we're going to do now, because there's a little bit of a breeze, I want to play around and see how this tree outside looks like. I've got another one that I've got from this morning um, when I was had nothing to say, so I decided to play around with the camera settings. I think I got a pretty cool one. Um, so yeah, let's give it a try. See how it looks. Sometimes it takes halfway through the day for something shareable to happen. You don't need to forcefully share things. I don't want to be putting out crap on this channel. I want there to be some value every day or something that you can take away. And today it took until 1 p.m. for there to be something that I wanted to share. So I am much more results oriented than I am time oriented. I don't myself, maybe this is fueled by myself and not being really diligent and um, super focused on the administrative side of tracking my time because when I have a goal and when I have something that needs to be accomplished, I want to get it done. It, it doesn't matter as much about how I get it done, it's the fact that it gets done. The accomplishment is much more important than the process that it took to get there. Now, that being said, I'm always trying to improve my processes, but the point that I'm trying to make here is not to get hung up with hours put into something. It's really important in today's day and age when more people are becoming entrepreneurial, more people are freelancing on the side, looking for a second gig, something outside of their normal job, that it's all based on accomplishment. If you look at every single person that goes into an interview, nobody asks you about the amount of time you put in there. Sure, they look at what your tenure was, three months, six months, 10 years, five years, how long were you there? But nobody asks, how many hours did you put in per day? When you look at what's, what was actually measured, it was, were you top in sales? What projects did you complete? How did you have an impact on the company? All of those things, especially impact, didn't happen because your ass was in the chair. Straight up, it doesn't work that way. So. I guess I'm more flexible when it comes to being a boss, when my team asks for time off, when they don't want to be in the office, when they're trying to finish up a project or wrap something up. I know we work in the creative space. I know we work with brilliant minds. And if there's a deadline that's set a week from now, it matters that the deadline is met. It doesn't matter that you're sitting in your chair for the next 40 hours. It doesn't matter. It doesn't work that way. Hours are an old metric. If we look at all of these new platforms that are designed to help crowdsource, uh, crowdsource talent around the world, especially in the creative space, things like Upwork, everything is based is project based time. While there is an hourly rate that's there, the client who's paying for this work is looking at the total budget. It's more important for the client to have a productized service than it is to have an hourly rate. And that's because when clients are looking to hire talent, they don't know how to quantify or keep the hours accountable. For me, if I'm looking for something outside of my expertise, let's say, let's take making a video for example, because this is something that I learned the other day from our video guys. If I'm looking to have a 10 minute video produced, I have no idea how to budget the time for that project in terms of shooting, editing, and actually getting the pro and actually getting the project out. Now, this is not one of these daily vlogs. Um, this is not the type of content that we would deliver to a client in terms of quality. You can check out that on our other channel that I'll link to below. But it's something that I had no idea about, and I had to ask them, how do I set expectations for a client that, that is having a video shoot? Do we need an hour to accomplish this five minute video? Do we need four hours? Do we need five days? How do we set expectations for the client? Part of that is them not thinking that they're paying for 10 hours on the clock of filming and then possibly 10 hours or 15 hours of editing afterwards. No, they just want the price for the output. And this gets back to the hours. Whether you're really efficient or really slow, 
it doesn't matter to the client. The client is willing to pay the price of what value is for the product that you have. And it's really important that you figure out what that value is. Because if you are looking to freelance to, to make extra money or just to be uh, freelancing to, to leverage your skills and utilize your skills, having posted rates out there is much more important than your hourly wage. Okay, so I know that's kind of redundant me saying it again, but here's the catch. Okay, this is where you can start being really, really efficient and become more profitable. Let's say you know that today it takes you 10 hours to build, let's say, a simple website for a client and, and you're going to charge them, let's say, somewhere between $300 and, and $1,000 depending on the features that they have in there. Great. The client that has the budget for that, that's really cheap in terms of websites and getting something done. You know that it's going to be 10 hours of your actual work. There's going to be some consulting time before to get the right information and probably some edits on the back end, but you're banking 10 hours that you need to sit down and actually get it done. Now, when you sell this service again, the exact same thing for another client because you work in the business space or you work in a particular vertical like we work with in sports entertainment and real estate, this is something that you can now maybe shave to eight hours, maybe six, maybe five, maybe eventually it can only take you three or four hours, but that market rate doesn't change. The market rate is not dictated by the hours that you put in. For us, it's something that doesn't matter about time. It doesn't matter about hours. And back to what I was saying, which fueled all of this, when we have someone who says, hey, I need the morning off, no problem. Do you have any deadlines that are going to be getting in the way of that? No. Great. Take the time. If you have a, if you have a, a deadline that says, you know, we need to get this to the client by Friday, which means I need the drafts in by Wednesday. So we have time for revisions within our own team. And then we get it out to the client ahead of that. Whatever you do within your time frame doesn't matter as long as the work is accomplished. And time zones, like I mentioned yesterday with conference calls, kind of change the regular day anyways. As well, everybody's different with when their creative juices are flowing. You're much more effective and much more efficient when you're working at your peak optimum output. Now, for me, I know that writing in the morning, way better. If I'm writing before 10 a.m., the words that flow out need less editing and need less proofreading. Now, that's really important because I know that if I'm trying in the middle of the afternoon to write out a blog post, it's horrendous. I have to go back. I have a draft that needs to be redrafted twice as many times. So for me, let's say I had to work and had to do that writing between 1 and 5 p.m., I would probably half as productive. So being able to have seat time doesn't matter as much as productivity. And how long does it actually take you to get your job done? That's great from an operational side, but for a person and for a company that's looking to have optimization, it's all about leveraging when you're most productive. That's the optimization side. On the quality side, it's just as important to leverage when your creative juices are flowing because then the quality ends up being way higher as well. So the point that I'm trying to make here is work when you're most productive. When your creative juices are flowing, get on it. Make sure you take advantage of every single minute that you have during that productive window because it's not something you can force. You can do things that allow you to get into that space and allow you to get into that product, uh, that productive and optimal mindset. But when it's there, make the most of it. This morning, I struggled to really process and get moving. I don't know if it was because yesterday was such a long day. Um, the first call was at eight, uh, ended up working until two in the morning. And it was just something that, yes, I had breaks in between, watched the Golden State Warriors game with dinner, hung out with the family, had some great time with Jeanette and Malaya. But it was something that I knew needed to be done. Did that set me back this morning? possibly. There was a rainstorm last night and I know that taking Aston out for his walk late at night, we came back soaked. Maybe this morning having the, the spring summer rain kind of wash everything away, it was like hitting a reset and it set me back. I don't know what it was, but this morning was not optimal for work and it was a struggle to get through things. So I did administrative tasks. It was something that was not fun anyways. It was taking care of my paperwork and making sure my email was clear, but make sure you make the most of your time. You only have 24 hours in a day. If anybody has a time machine that knows how to put pause, I could use a couple extra hours because I'd love to spend less time working and spend more time with my wife and my daughter. But it's definitely up to you to make the most of it. Yeah.